I have just learned about a super secret, top secret project that Mr. Dan Bird is working on, and he has agreed to share it with all of us. It is what to buy, when to buy, and where to put your stops. I know nothing more than that, and I can't wait to learn just like you. All righty, Mr. Bird, you've teased me long enough. What so to buy, it's... when to buy, and where to put my stops. So it's so top secret that a week ago it didn't even exist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's funny. No, it's, it's actually a project that I'm, I just started working on this week. And I'll explain. I've been waiting to do this. I've, I've been thinking about it, but I've been waiting to do it. And I'll, I'll explain why here in a second. Okay. But I have this question from a lot of people. They're like, you know, you give lots of great information, but I don't really make rec stock recommendations individual stocks because I'm not a financial planner and you know it's up to each person to understand what their risk profile is and I can't tell you what to buy and mm -hmm. but people have asked me you know how do you figure out what you should buy and how do you figure out when you should buy and when you buy something where do you put your stops how do you do that okay so I started working on a little project to create a portfolio to do that do exactly that basically okay and I'm using my own money for it so I we're like gonna it. see we're going to see how it works out. Okay. And I, I, like and I could lose. I could lose. I could be completely real, real. We're talking real money. We're not talking some fictitious paper this money. Is, we're real money. This is real, this is real money. Oh, I like it. So I could be completely wrong. <laughs> we'll know. We'll know soon enough. Numbers don't lie. <laughs> the, good, the good thing is because of my uh, risk management, I will not lose all my money. Yeah, it'll be small increments. Yeah. That cannot happen. But um, let me show you what I'm doing. Let me first hit show you my, oh, I need to share first. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, first, uh, my newsletter for those that are interested, just go to my website, breakpointtrading.net and log in with your email, register your email. But be sure you go to the subscription page Button. and click on the one that says zero dollar free newsletter right you have to actually subscribe even though it's free and we don't ask for a credit card or anything like that and i don't sell emails or any of that, 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 that kind of stuff but you do have to actually subscribe to the free one mm -hmm. to get the newsletter so if okay. if you're interested i do this every week i usually finish i do it on saturday morning i usually finish around noon eastern time noon to one, one o'clock latest. And then I put it out here on the website right away. So by usually midday by on Saturday or morning on the, on the West Coast, the newsletter will be there. So it's the easiest, quickest way to get to it. All right, so let me show you what I am doing. First thing I wanna show is this is VectorVest. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you. Let me see if I can get this out of my way here. Do you see that on your end, by the way? No, I'm still seeing the portfolio. It says okay. my bull portfolio dividend. Right. Okay. So um, I'm going to go to graphs. This is okay. the market timing graph from VectorVest. Um, there are two ways that they identify. Th this is a great way to kind of time the market. You can't time the top or the bottom, but you can time the trend of the market. You can understand what you know where the trend is. You can never get the exact bottom or the exact top. Mm -hmm. But one thing that VectorVest does is it will identify for you right on the homepage what the trend looks like, shows you these colored bars so you can get a sense for you know, whether it's trending towards green or towards red. The longest call is the confirmed down. That's the one that's the most conservative. Mm -hmm. But the one that's a little less conservative, but usually reacts a little sooner, is called the DEW, which stands okay. for the detrended price oscillator. The E is for the envelope of price. And then the W is the weighted moving average, which is this yellow, this white line right here. When the price goes above the white line, which it is right now, and it's been there for four days, and the detrended price oscillator goes above zero, which it has not done yet, but we only need one more up day. 
Mm. And that one will trigger as well. And when that happens, it will trigger a buy signal. Now, right now it's in a down signal because this the second one hasn't triggered yet. All right. Got it. So Got if you it. notice back here, this is a this is a green one. This is when both of them happened right here. And it stayed in that uptrend for basically two months. All right, before it gave a downtrend. Now, I just started this this week, and I may be jumping the gun a little bit because I am anticipating this one to go positive and, okay. and getting a green arrow. Okay. But that doesn't mean it will. I mean, it could reverse and go down. So if that happens, then I'm completely wrong. Mm -hmm. But what I'm what I've been doing is I'm running a search. In VectorVest, I've got two searches. One is I use my best of the best chart list. And that's where I use a, a number of different subscription sites that I use to pull in the best fundamentals, companies with the best fundamentals from all of these different places. And then I go in and look at every single stock individually and make sure that earnings are climbing or increasing. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that I keep in that list. Got it. And there's roughly about 180 to 200, something like that, 150 to 200 names in there. And that's what I use for all of these scans. So I've got two scans. One is basically using that list. I wanna see that it's given me a buy. It has not been a buy rating and, it's, and now I've had a buy for two days straight, okay? And I wanna see that the stock is near the top of its range. It's greater than the open, so it's moving up. And it's, uh, the high price, it's it's at the upper end of its range as well. So it basically, it's moving up. Okay, so I've got mm -hmm. two buys in a row and the stock is moving up. The other one that I'm using gives me a little earlier signal, but it might also, also be more risky. This okay. is using the stop price that VectorVest provides. And it's looking for stocks that are 3% above the stop price and mm -hmm. also moving up just like before. So the, the trend of the stock is up. So those are the two that I run. If I try this one just out of curiosity, it only gives me one out of roughly 150 stocks. Hmm. All right. And if I look at the, the chart on that, you can see, you'll, first you'll see that the earnings down here, this gray area, those, those are all moving up. You can see that it had a really great run. It's got two buys in a row. Mm -hmm. So that's my criteria. Okay. The other one for just getting above its stop price gives me two, SMCI, which everyone's probably familiar with, and Airbnb. And if I graph those, SMCI, you can see just went down here. This, this gray area here is where the stop price is for this. So it went down a little below the stop price and now it's starting to come back up again. It's got one buy signal. Right. But in this particular scan, I'm just looking for it to be 3% above the stock price, right? And I'm looking for the stock to be increasing in value during this day, during today. So you can see with that cap, uh, candle, it's actually increasing in value. If that candle had looked like this one, in other words, if it had ended the day at the bottom of its range, it would not appear on the scan. So oh it needs to be at the top of its range to appear here. And you can see earnings down here are increasing as well. The other one is Airbnb. Airbnb is just starting to climb 3% above its stop price. Does not have a buy yet, but earnings are increasing. So it meets all of my criteria. So that's right. the criteria that I use to identify these stocks. Now, yeah. what I've done is I just started this three days ago and I built a portfolio, by the way, on my website, I also have these dividend portfolios that we've talked about before in the past. Mm -hmm. I started these on the 3rd of January. So right. my right. goal for this is just to, to, to run some scans. These are aristocrats, which is an industry standard, the top uh, dividend payers. And then this is a scan that I created myself at the beginning of the year. And I don't touch these. Mm -hmm. I, now, this is not my own money. I'm not using my own money. This is just yeah, to just track this to see how it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see the one that I created is up 17% for the year. And the mm -hmm. dividend aristocrats is up 7.3%. Hmm. All right. And all these are dividend payers. All right. Now, the one that I just created, I call my bull portfolio. Okay. I just started it three days ago. 
it's up 0.62% so far. Mm. So if I look at that, we can see the stocks that are in it. And now, just so I'm clear, you bought all, I don't know what it is, 10 I stocks? bought all of these. And, and what I'm doing is I am taking $100,000 mm -hmm. of my own money. Right. And I'm going to buy 20 names. Oh, okay. I got you. So this portfolio will end up at some point with 20 names. It may not get to 20. If the right. market continue, if the market continues higher, then it will. If the market reverses and starts to go down, then it yeah. won't. You'll, yeah, you're going to stopped out of these. Yeah. Well, I'll get stopped out of these, but also my scans won't show anything. Right. Exactly. Yep. Because none, none of the scans won't be giving me stocks that are going up anymore. Got it. Right. So I won't have anything on my scan every day. So this is these are the ones so far. That I've got in here too. And four, you're doing just sorry. Eight. So you're doing five grand a pop? Five grand a pop. Yep. Okay. Got it. Um, so all, all I do is whenever these appear in my scan, I go look at them. I use uh, Schwab as my trading platform. Okay. I look at them in Schwab. I see what the price is. So you can see here it's 131.92. I just divide that into $5,000 and it says I can buy 38 shares. Got it. So I, I actually buy them in my account yep. and then I put them in this portfolio. So this Got portfolio re reflects exactly what I have in my Schwab account. Hmm. All right. So you can see right here, the ROI, the only one that's, that's the, the worst is Broadcom. Broadcom had earnings this week. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I, I should have done and I didn't do, but I'm going to talk about that in a second. Two of them had earnings this week. One was pure storage and the other was Broadcom. Okay. Normally, I don't like to buy stocks just before earnings. Right. You've said that a couple of times. Right. Yep. But, I, but I forgot to look this time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so these, these showed up on my scan. So I bought Broadcom. Broadcom had earnings. So I'm going to look at the chart on this one. <clears throat> There's Broadcom. You see how it's come down right there. Yeah. Big red now, candle. Right. So the first thing is what to buy. So I showed you how I do what to buy, right? I use, I use that list of the best fundamental names, about 150 of them. And then I run scans against it based on the ones that are going up and they have to be rising during that day. So that's how I figure out what to buy. When to buy is is the the scans also tell me when to buy it because it's showing me that they're going up. Mm -hmm. They have buy recommendations or they're just came off a stop and they're heading higher, so that's when to buy. So the third piece is where do you set stops, right? Okay. Yep. So what I've done on these all of these is first of all in my website under the charts section, uh, actually on the portfolio section. This is where I have all those dividend candidates over here. Okay. Yep. Uh, and you can actually click on this and see which symbols are in each one of these. So there's 10 in each. of. I've got three dividend candidates that I started on J January 3rd. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to touch this until next January, the end of December. Right. We'll, we'll see how they did. But you can see the symbols by clicking on that. And you can see the summary report there. Wow. Pretty cool. Same thing over here. This is the these are the candidates that I just showed you. So these are the ones that my scan for new buy candidates. I remember this means they got a buy two days in a row. They were not a buy, and then they got two in a row buy okay. recommendations. Okay. Right. These over here hit got within three percent of the stop price and then started to rise, and they continued rising. Okay. All right. So there's the there's the two scans that I run, and this explains the scans down here, what's in them. And then I put these in here and I put in the price that I bought it at, et cetera. So let's okay. look at AVGO. Now, now this is gonna take me to stock charts. And what I do in stock charts is I use this horizontal green dash line for the price that I bought it at. Mm -hmm. So you can see there's there's the price. You can see whether it's above or below, and right now it's below. Mm -hmm. And the vertical line is the day that I bought it on. Got it. Okay, so that's my buy right there. My stop price is down here. Now, how do I set the stop? I 
it, it's somewhat subjective, but I do two things. First, I look at the chandelier exit and it's at 846. This is something that's in stock charts that uses the average true range, mm -hmm. the average range that this travels in one day. And it uses three times the average true range and it, it puts a stop or it puts a an exit price. And it's this real light dotted green line right here. So right now this stop price is right at the chandelier exit. Hmm. Alternatively, I could just use the stop price from Vector Best. So I'll use one or the other, depending on where they are. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So in this case, right now, the stock stock price in Vector Best is lower than this. It's actually down here around 828, I think. So I'm using a, the higher one in this case because you can see what happened with Broadcom after earnings. Broadcom went down. So they're right at the, the 21 day moving average. Now Broadcom actually had great earnings. They beat mm -hmm. revenue and they beat er uh, earnings, but they had weak guidance. Mm -hmm. So the stock sold off. Now, if it, if it gets down here to this point, now all of these stops, this is an important point. All of these stops that I'm showing are mental stops. Right. They're, manu they're manual stops. What that means is the price has to close at the end of the day below that point. Oh, okay. All right. It doesn't have to just go down and below it and then come back up. And as an example, I'm going to show you the other one that I bought just before earnings. In fact, the day of earnings. Not looking at the earnings first before I, before I did it. And that's pure storage right here. So this one I use this, you know, three percent above the stop price, and the price is moving higher. You can see where I bought it right here the day before earnings. Actually, I think it was the day of earnings. I think earnings came out after the close that day. And the horizontal green line is the price that I bought it for. Now, what you'll notice is that the next day after earnings, the price dropped way down here. It went below that chandelier exit, which is where I would, which is where I had my my manual stop, my mental stop. Right. But I did not have an automatic stop on this. Mm -hmm. All right. So what that means is it went below that stop price, but at the end of the day, it did not close below it. So I am still in this one. And that's a good example of why using a manual stop sometimes is a better way to do it. Now, you could also lose more money if it goes way down there and doesn't reverse, right? Okay. But in this case, it did. It went down and reversed because they had great earnings too. Hmm. They beat earnings and revenue and had good guidance. Okay. But the stock just sold off continually all day and I was watching it. And then by the end of the day, it was back above the stock price. Hmm. So my rule is if it gets to 5% above, um, in fact, let me go back to this you see pure storage right here mm -hmm. pure storage is at 5.6 percent roi hmm. so when it gets to five percent i've moved i've moved my stop up to my buy price so now you can see the red stop line is at the same price as the green buy line okay i like that all right so the next my next rule is if it goes up eight percent then i will move my stop up to half 50% of between where I bought it and where that where the high was. So if it goes up 8%, then I move it up to 4%. I, I will so make all, a, all of those are manual still this whole time? Uh, right now, this is automatic. This one's automated. Once okay. once the, the first stop is manual. Okay, that's what I wanted to check. Just that yeah. mental manual. And then once yeah. you're in the money, you- Once I'm in the money, I make them automatic stops. Okay, got it. That makes sense to me. Okay. Right. So right now it's at, it's at break even. This is an automated mm -hmm. stop. So if it go, goes back down below this, it's going to stop out. Stop out. And I okay. won't lose. I won't lose anything. Right. But if it goes up eight percent, then I'm going to set my stop at four percent, and I, and that will be automatic. an automated. That'll be an automated stop, and I will make four percent, unless it just keeps on going higher. And as it right. goes higher, I'll keep moving the stop up to fifty cool. percent of the distance. 
Well, this would be fun to look at maybe makes once sense. a month. Yeah, absolutely makes yeah. sense. Uh, yeah. I think looking at this once a month kind of re reviewing, because again, you'll be out of some, you'll be adding more. Yes. Um, so that that's a very good point. So if Broadcom does get stopped out, mm -hmm. then I will remove this from the list. Right. And you'll recognize that will open the up loss. another space and then I'll yep. run my scan again. And if the market keeps going up, it'll still it'll keep giving me more candidates. If mm -hmm. the market goes down, it won't give me any candidates. If the market continues to go down, then these, these will slowly stop out. Some of them will stop out at a profit. Yep. Some of them will stop out at a, at a small loss. But if the market is going down, that's what you want. Right. You want you want your system to take you out if the market goes down. If right. the market continues to go higher, which I think it will, I think we're going to have, it's going to bounce around until the end of October. Mm -hmm. But after the end of October till the end of the year, I think the market is going to take off. Well, so you're going to be coming back every week. So I look forward to looking forward to see what happens. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with these. Now, if you'll notice Airbnb right now, mm -hmm. ROI is at 6.26. Mm -hmm. It's already at 140. Now, I bought this on Thursday at 131. So it's already at 140. So if I look at Airbnb back here, there's 131.92. You can see I've I've already moved my stop up to my buy point, so I can't lose money on this. Right, because again, it's above five percent. Makes total. It's above five percent, it. and if it gets to eight percent, which is 142, so it's uh, after hours, it's already at 140. It could mm -hmm. easily get to 142 on Monday. Tuesday. Or Tuesday, yeah. Sorry, Tuesday. It's okay. Um, and if that happens, then I'll move this up, my stop up to four percent, which will probably be right about the 50 day moving average. And then uh, then I have a profit no matter what happens. I have a profit on that. One. I like it. Well, we will definitely check into this. Maybe we check in this the first of the like our first talk every month. Right. Today's the third. Yeah, I so. mean, I can I could just show you right here on my website. I've got all these candidates. Uh, anybody nice. that's an annual member can click on these and look at the charts. By the way, you don't have to be a stock charts member to look at these charts. So that it'll work and, and they update automatically. So they'll update throughout the day. The charts, all of the charts on my site will update automatically. But you'll see, you know, right now, 9 1, this is three days worth. Right. About 0.7%. Very cool. So it's an well, interesting I, uh, experiment. This is real money that I'm putting up. Give this I like a try. It. what to buy, work. when to buy, and where to put your stops, Dan. I look forward to talking with this. One more time, show your website. Sure. Uh, breakpointtrading.net, not .com. Okay. It is .net. And just sign up and register, but also subscribe to the $0 free newsletter if that's all you want. If you want a lot of the other stuff that I've been showing, that does require a paid annual subscription, but it's not very much. No. I, what, I, what I say is pe people that just want to kind of follow the market but aren't really in the market, mm -hmm. just get the newsletter. It'll give you right. lots of information. And there's a lot of good stuff on the, on my website. For those that are actually in the market buying their stocks on their own, then you might want to get all the other cool stuff that the website offers. Yeah. And again, you're an active trader. You're doing this for a long time. So, uh, uh, yeah. and of course, you've been on this plate. You have your own playlist. It's uh, what, two years yeah. long, something like that. So people can go back uh, and Not watch. quite. It'll be two years in on December, on New Year's Eve. Of this New Year's year. Eve. Very cool. Wow. Been a long time. Thanks, buddy. Wonderful. I appreciate you. All right. Have a good weekend.